Pro, it's pro, like you get uh, pro. productivity. Productivity, not productivity. Productivity. I think it's pro, like pro, like you're a pro at it. Productivity. Product. Pro. Anyway, productivity, 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 whatever. <laughs> now I'm confused on how you're supposed to say it. Hey, Google, how do you say productivity? That's pronounced productivity. Product. Oh, shoot. I didn't know that. We're both it's a product right? and an activity. This is the Creative Crunch Podcast. Yesterday's left turn might be tomorrow's right turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. That's a good idea. All right. Like I said, let's get this going. So we got stuff to do. We got to be productive. What, what stuff do you have to do? Well, I got a lot of wedding videos. I yeah. Keep it name on. seven things. Seven weddings. <laughs> okay, well, this is going to be a take two of this podcast because for some reason I could not figure out how to do it the first time. Um, so here we are. Welcome to Creative Crunch. Nope, I said that wrong. Welcome to the Creative Crunch podcast, episode two. 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 Point zero. But two take two. Two yeah. take two. But technically, this would be episode three, but we're not going to get into that again like last technically, time. Technically, this would be like episode four because we're just take two of take two. of two. Yeah, but take one of take two didn't exist because we deleted it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway. So uh, welcome back for those of you who are joining us again and listening. Uh, and shout out to you guys for listening the first time or watching however you want to consume your podcast content. But seriously, thank you. Uh, it goes a long way to watch, listen, or whatever, and give us a like or subscribe or follow. We appreciate that. Um, if you are new here, welcome. This is called The Creative Crunch Podcast, uh, and I am Reed, and Ben is with me, and we are, we are the hosts. And just a quick overview, it's going to be about entrepreneurship, creativity, the wedding industry, uh, the commercial video industry, uh, and just really anything that you can think of, and we want to bring on guests and all of that awesome stuff. But today, Ben, why don't you uh, go ahead and tell them what we're going to talk about. Today, we're going to just talk about stuff that allows us to be productive, I guess. I just, stuff. I guess, and this isn't necessarily stuff that we do. This is kind of stuff that we, we uh, have found over the internet or people have told us tips, just different ways to be yeah. productive and how to be more motivated. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. this podcast is going to kind of be tailored towards, I mean, really anybody, uh, anyone that does work, <laughs> like any sort of work, even if you work for another company or you work for yourself, uh, Productivity, productivity. How do you technically say that? Pro, it's pro. Like you get uh, pro. productivity. Productivity, not productivity. Productivity. I think it's pro. Like pro, like you're a pro at it. Productivity. Product. Pro. Anyway, productivity. Productivity. productivity whatever. <laughs> now I'm confused on how you're supposed to say it. Hey Google, how do you say productivity? That's pronounced productivity. Product. Oh shoot! I didn't know that. We're both it's a our- product and an activity. <laughs> Productivity, product, product. Anyway, <laughs> you're trying to be. All right, take three. <laughs> you're trying to be active with your product. You're, yeah, <laughs> but anyway, productivity is super important in life. Period. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether you work, you don't work. You're an entrepreneur. You work for someone else. No matter what you do, being productive is huge. Is, is a huge key to success. So we're gonna chat a little bit about that. Maybe talk about our kind of our routines and our flows to be productive. Uh, I mean, when we're productive, but um, yeah, take it off. Yes. All right. So yeah, we'll talk about our, what we do. Um, So, so sorry, I dropped my uh, soda can. Um, So for me, soda, soda, (laughs) this whole podcast (laughs) is just questioning how we say things. (laughs) My soda can. Um, So for me, every day is a little bit different, but usually starts with Lauren. So Lauren wakes up because she has to be at work by 830. So I'm usually, I usually try to be up and downstairs and she usually does a good job of kind of getting me going because she's like, hey, can you go like remote start my car? Or can you go make me something to eat or something? And um, it's usually a good way for me to start. Uh, But then I kind of will like open my computer and I'll kind of look at my emails, notifications, notifications. 
and try to look through those first. And sometimes if I'm feeling re- if I'm dragging, then that's usually when I'll go to the gym to kind of get myself going a little bit. Um, but, um, yeah, usually I have to start my day with some sort of task, whether that's cleaning the kitchen, going to the gym, something that feels productive that's not necessarily work related, mm-hmm. something that just kind of gets me into the flow of being productive. Yeah, it's one of those things too where um, <clears throat> once you do that first productive thing for the day, uh, it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day. I know we talked about in the last podcast a little bit um, <clears throat> about that video of that that Navy SEAL, I think it was, at a graduation um, where he gave this speech on, you know, if you want to change the world, uh, make your bed each morning. Uh, and he just goes a little bit in depth about that. And it's like, if you start your day with making your bed, which is productive, it's something that needs to get done. I mean, I don't really make, we don't really make our bed, but, um, if that is something that you do, uh, that first step of productivity that day is going to lead you to more productive things throughout the day. And if you continue that cycle day to day to day, um, you're going to be very, very productive and you're going to get a lot of stuff done. And that's kind of what he means by if you want to change the world, make your bed each morning. I'd like to take note though, that like, um, productivity, I feel like is completely different for someone that like works for a company Versus someone who's an entrepreneur or owns their own business because, like, at the end of the day, like, you can leave – like, people that work for a company can, like, leave work and they're just, like, they're done. They're, like mm, – but I mean, I don't know. Maybe people feel different for their jobs or whatever. Um, yeah, it's all for very – me, as a creative, I – when I get to the end of the day and I feel like I haven't been productive, it's, it's almost depressing. It's, like, I'm, like, upset with myself – and it's it can it can really weigh on you at the end of the day. Whereas I feel like when I used to work at a company, I'd leave work and if I wasn't productive, I was like, ah, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> like I just yeah, didn't no. care. It didn't even cross my mind. But like now, I get to the end of the day and it's just like stressful when you feel like, oh my god, I've been responding to messages all day. I need to get editing this and just it can it can be it can produce some anxiety. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things too where. I mean, really, what if you're doing what you're passionate about? Um, so when you're doing what you're passionate about, it's super important that you do it well and you're you're productive with your time. Um, and like what Ben was saying, if you know if you work for yourself or if you're doing something um, that you're super passionate about, and you get to the end of the and you get to the end of the day, and you didn't like cross off all those check marks on your to do list, or you didn't get done what you wanted to get done. Yeah, it can be pretty daunting, and can you know, it can kind of put you in a kind of a, a funky mood, or kind of like a depressing state, like you said. Um, but yeah, I think productivity is very different in each industry, and for for each person, um, you know, with us in the wedding industry, and especially in slow season where we're we're editing, we're catching up on some edits. Um, a productive day can look very different. A productive day can be like, okay, cool. I got, you know, I went through the ceremony. I went through the toasts and I found some of the, you know, the audio from the day that I want to use. Um, and then another day be like, oh, sweet. Like I just nailed that portrait session or I nailed that part of the video where, you know, you're overlaying all the portraits or whatever. Like it can literally look different. So I guess the long winded answer of what I'm trying not answer the long winded thing of what I'm trying to say is that like in our industry, you don't have to complete something to be productive. If that makes sense. Like you don't have to finish a video to have a productive day. Do you, I don't know. Do you feel the same about that? Or do you feel like once you No, I mean, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but you could also see it as like you break certain like, I mean, yeah, there's a final product of, like, a wedding film, but you could also be, like, this going through the ceremony and finding the pieces is is something that you could complete. But, right. Um, but, yeah, you don't – it definitely – they're, like, much bigger goals, and it's, it's nearly impossible to get those big goals done in, like, one day. Like, you, that's going to take a while, especially yeah. as a creative. 
Yeah, if you if you end up hiring a wedding videographer that gets your entire film done in like one or two days, I want to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, I want to know how they somehow processed that. And yeah, because what I don't even know what I'm trying to say there. I mean, it's a process. Um, I've always tried to explain it to couples because, like, you have to be in the right headspace to produce a wedding film. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't, like, have the – I mean, like, so for me, I have to – when I'm editing when Lauren's home, I have to have, like, my noise-canceling feature on. Um, I have to turn my body so that, like, the TV – isn't going to let – like I, if I'm sitting on the couch with her, I have to like turn my body in a certain way so that like the TV doesn't catch my attention in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and like sometimes I just have to s- sit and just like listen to the dialogue from the day just so I can get in the headspace like I was sitting at that wedding. Um, but yeah, trying to like take pieces of dialogue and place it on a timeline a certain way. I mean it takes – it's a lot of – a lot yeah. Of work. So, like, definitely with editing, especially weddings, um, there's different milestones that you, you that we hit um, in a day that can you know classify our day as as productive. Um, but yeah, I know we kind of just went on a tangent a little bit there. But do you feel like you talked about like how do you get like what like your routine of how you get into a flow or yeah. Yeah, for me, I honestly think one of the best things, like, my go-to is going to the gym. Like, if I go to the gym, like, at first it lets me leave my, like, leave my house. um, Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel like I'm going somewhere, like, people, like, people that work at a job. um, It does, it makes me feel like I'm going somewhere to be productive. And then... It also feels like working out is healthy. I mean, you're healthy when you're doing that. So it feels like I did something productive, which kind of gets me rolling down my list of things I need to do. Like, okay, I got one thing done. Now I can do my next thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I would have a similar answer. You know, I'll wake up and then, you know, I take care of the dogs. So, um, you know, feed them or whatever, and then take them outside. So I usually get like a little bit of a walk in. Um, and like, like you were saying, the fact that I'm getting out of the house or out of the apartment in my case, um, <clears throat> kind of almost helps me like reset my mind instead of just like, oh, okay, I'm at home in the morning. Like I just woke up. It's more like, okay, I'm out. I'm being productive. I'm walking the dog. Now I'm going to, once I walk back through that door, I'm at work. I'm not at home anymore. And I think that's, that's something that at least I struggle with is working at home. Like my home office is, is like my studio. So I'm literally in my apartment every single day for hours on end, like working and living. Um, and sometimes I, I feel like that can be a little bit of a, a struggle there. Do you have like any things that you do? Cause I know you, you work from, you work from home too. Are there any tips that you use to make it feel more like your office rather than just another room in your home? Uh, well, first it has to be clean. Like if I'm, so for, as me as a creative, I have to, I can't like sit in one place for a long period of time like I know you have a desktop computer, so you mm-hmm. must your mind must work a little bit different than mine does. But like, if I'm sitting at my desk, um, working on a film, sometimes I just need like a fresh atmosphere, a fresh like place. So maybe I'll go sit down in my kitchen dining room and sit there with a new um, place. But for me to do that, it has to be clean. So like, making sure my like if I'm sitting in the living room, even just the thought knowing that my uh, my sink is full of dishes is like really frustrating so i just have to go clean it and get it done with um so yeah having like a clean clean apartment or clean house um that can help so you're not thinking about that kind of stuff yeah because i mean in all honesty 
I don't know. I'm not super affected by it. Like if there's dirty dishes in the sink, like I'm not like, oh my gosh, I need to go get that done. Like it's not like lingering in my head. Um, but that does make sense. Like, you know, especially if your area is kind of dirty, like that you're working, um, uh, that's a huge distraction too. You're like, oh, you know what? I could probably, you know, go clean that up. Or like, if you're working, you're not going to be 100% focused on what you're doing. You can have like those side thoughts of, well, maybe I should clean or, well, maybe I should organize this drawer or these papers or whatever. And, um, yeah, no, that, that makes complete sense. I like having a decently clean work area. Um, if it's kind of unorganized, like I have a bunch of cords here that no one can see and that doesn't really bug me, but like having dirty dishes in the sink, like, I don't know, for some reason I, my mind doesn't work that way. Like I think, it, so I, I think it might be me. So I have ADHD and I think that's part of the problem too. It's cause I think about so many different things at one at a single time. And, um, I think that like clutter is like overwhelming. Just thinking about like, uh, I just can't do it. Yeah. No, that makes sense too. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's kind of, almost kind of a good <laughs> transition into like the next thing that we we're going to talk a little bit about is like um, what challenges do we face with productivity in like either our industry or working from home? I know we talked a little bit about that or, um, you know, those days that aren't productive, aren't very productive for you. Like why, why do you think that or, do you see like a reoccurring thing on those days or? Uh, um, it's usually, <laughs> it's usually messages and I don't know what it is, but some days I feel like I get more messages than others. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think just telling myself sometimes that I can respond to messages at a later time, but it's hard too because it's like, Somebody emails me at like eight o'clock p at night. Um, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, she probably emailed like three other videographers, and she's probably gonna be the first to respond to the first person. So I'm like, I gotta respond to this now because otherwise, I'm that's income that I'm losing out on. Yeah, um, I, I remember when I was like first about to go full time, <clears throat> and you were telling me about like. I was asking about like when you made the jump, like what, what you saw and you're like, don't be surprised if there's like a couple of days a week that all you do is just respond to emails <laughs> or messages or inquiries or whatever. I was like, it doesn't really seem like that would be a thing, but okay, I'll keep that in mind. And holy cow, were you right? Like there are just some days that you'll get up at eight o'clock or start working by nine or something like that. And then four thirty rolls around and you just finished your last email and you're like, I haven't even edited anything yet. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to take note too. Like, this is kind of this is kind of off topic, but like, they. So I looked it up right before this on what the average amount of work is for someone that's an employee at a business. For like an average for an eight hour work day, um, the average worker is productive for two hours and fifty three minutes of those eight hours. So not um, even three hours of those eight hours are considered productive on av like on average is what you're saying? Yeah. They said the average American works 8.8 .8 hours every day and the average worker is productive for two hours and 53 minutes per day. <laughs> that's uh, crazy. I think that's crazy. And I, and I look back and I'm like, like I look at my day as a videographer and I'm thinking about considering things like responding to emails for me, being productive feels like editing a film. I feel like responding to emails is almost a thing like I have to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if I'd consider it productive. But like then I think, okay, responding to emails is productive. I feel like I'm probably productive for at least six hours of the day. Like I have to do that stuff. But Yeah. I mean, yeah, like you said, in its own way, like responding to emails or doing the the day-to-day the -day stuff of the business, you know, is not – it doesn't really feel productive, even though it is, because that stuff needs to get done. And then, like, by definition, getting those things done is being productive. <laughs> but um, I think what it comes down to, especially, like, with our industry, is we have something tangible that we're trying to get out to our client. And that is a huge measure of um, 
what what's productive for our days or not, whether that's, you know, completing a film and, you know, sending it off. Like I'm going to send this recent um, wedding highlight to the couple tonight. And that's, that's going to be a huge productivity thing for me today is because that's one. Yeah. Those are like the biggest things on your list, literally those Mm -hmm. films. And so like when you get one of those checked off, it's, it's literally, you're dropping like so much weight off your shoulders. Yeah. And I think something that people need to be careful about, like I need to be careful about it. And I believe probably you do too, but even people in a different industry or people that work for someone else is like, make sure you're not only measuring productivity on like the completion of something big. Like, you know, if, if you wake up, say, I mean, we'll just stick with the wedding industry cause that's what we know, but say, you get up, you respond to emails and you're editing by 1030 in the morning or whatever. And say you, for the rest of the day, you get through the ceremony and the toasts of your wedding and pick out the dialogue that you want to use in the highlight. Like that's, that to me, that's a productive day because that, you know, that takes time. That's the beginning of crafting their entire story. There's just so much that goes into, you know, um, editing wedding videos or editing whatever that yeah, there's like, yeah, t- yeah, there's I was going to mo- go back to that ceremony. I was going to go back to that ceremony thing. Like, go ahead. it's not as easy as just like hit play on the ceremony. And so mm-hmm. the ceremony was 45 minutes long. It's not that easy. Like, you, it's not just like hit play and then you're done with the ceremony in 45 minutes. No, yeah. you're, you're stopping, you're changing camera angles. You're finding, you're going, zooming in on dialogue parts and cutting a certain part and pulling it up as like a usable part. And then you're like looking once once you get done with the ceremony, then you're kind of looking at it and going like, okay, this piece of dialogue could tie in with this piece of dialogue. Mm-hmm. And you got to clean it up, and it's it's more than just a let me hit play and there I'm done editing in 45 minutes. Like it's yeah. So I, what I was saying is like I just think it's important to measure your like productivity not only on. A completion of something. So like you get that small portion done. Yeah. You're nowhere near done with the entire film, but like, that's just something you had to check off the list and get done. And I think it's very important for us to look at stuff like that as being productive. Um, cause if we get stuck in the mindset of, of, you know, well, I didn't get a film done today. Like it was kind of a, I didn't do anything today. And then you get in that kind of that funk we were talking about earlier, um, I don't think that's like mentally healthy or um, necessarily good for your business either. Yeah, I think what's helped me is so working on these wedding. Like this is the time of the year where, I mean, I felt this way last year where I just feel all this pressure to get these videos done. Um, but I think what's helped me is thinking about each rather than, I mean, because if you really think about it, yeah. So one thing I need to do is a ceremony. I need to go through like a ceremony and like pull out the pieces. But then that's just one of the pieces. Like then I need to go through the toasts um, if they had like interviews and then start putting those on the timeline. So that's like one film. And then I got like six more of those. Like it can be overwhelming to sit and look at all those things that I have. But to making that list smaller and like being like, okay, yeah, today is – Today I get this done. And now that I've been doing that, kind of watching myself check these things off the list, the list is – like I like uh, the Masterson said to me, like looking at their list of films, it starts to look less daunting every day. Um, so, yeah, that's – Yeah. The smaller like – the- like, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I was going to say that um, I don't know if you do to-do lists, like actually – physically write them out. But I like to do that every once in a while. And for some reason, when you cross off one thing on that to-do list, it's so motivating to cross the next thing off and the next thing off and the next thing off. Um, I think that's kind of what you're talking about too. You know, on the bigger end of things, like with getting these wedding films done, um, you know, when that list is so big and so heavy, it is pretty daunting. But once you kind of get in the flow of things, like we were talking about earlier, um, it just, it becomes, you kind of start to see the light at the end of the tunnel there. Um, 
So I don't know. I think to-do lists are awesome. I think they're a cool way of like motivating you to continue to be productive and get things done. Yeah, I think I've, I think I've kind of turned more into mental to-do lists. Like I know, I should I should get back into the habit though of writing stuff down. Then it would maybe be easier to. Yeah, see, I, like I've I've done the mental to do list things too, and it's not like I forget what I need to get done. Like I'm pretty good about knowing what I need to get done, but there is something about physically taking a pen and crossing it off on a list that just makes you feel yeah. so good. After we're done talking, I'm going to grab a piece of paper. <laughs> Make a to-do list? Yeah. It's actually um, fun, funny. I Oops, I just dropped the pen. I don't have uh, like a to-do list right now today, but I've got this get your shit, get your shit together list. <laughs> I got it. I don't know. Someone gave it to me in college uh, for when I was like <laughs> super. Super busy, yeah. Easy shit, tough shit, and then other uh, shit. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. um, that's what I use for my list. And I don't know, I look at that and it's just kind of funny because just get your shit together. Sorry. Speaking Drop. of that, um, one, one tip that I've read is so the – you had a call in there that said tough shit. Mm-hmm. One of the productivity things is to just um, – so it says each of us have one of the, or more tasks on our to-do list that we dread doing. It may be an mm-hmm. unpleasant phone call or you don't want to make it – make out that memo you've been putting off writing. Whatever it is, it keeps getting pushed and then the week gets overwhelming because you just keep thinking about that overwhelm – that tough thing. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but do it first so then it's just a huge chunk lifted off your shoulder. So for me, that me that's this, like the ceremony edits, are pro like going through that ceremony multiple times is e- easily probably the least fun. Um, it's probably the least fun process. Yeah. But for me, doing that first, um, is is probably the biggest thing to get off my shoulder. Yeah, I know I've seen a video. I couldn't tell say the name of it. I have no idea, but it, it talked exactly like that about look at your list of stuff to do. And if once you complete like the timing, like, you know, if you gotta get something done by eight AM, obviously you gotta do that first or whatever. But if you're sitting on a list like with what we what we do, um, we don't necessarily have specific deadlines to get things done. Like we have a time frame where like, hey, this takes, you know, six to eight weeks to finish or whatever. But if once you look at that and you look at the the bigger stuff to do, if you just tackle that first, it's literally going to just make everything else so much easier too. And then like you're going to have a huge productive day because if you take that, that harder, you know, the harder things on those lists and you put, push it off to the end of the day, you're just going to continue to keep pushing it off and get longer and longer. And then, um, you know, you're going to get closer to that deadline or, or that time frame that you were talking about. And that just causes a lot of unneeded stress. So, I mean, you know, besides emails and different stuff like that, that need to be taken care of every, you know, couple hours or whatever. Um, yeah, I really like that, that tip or that task or whatever you would call it of, um, tackling the big things first. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <coughs> another one is just nourishing your mind whether that's like going to the gym and i like listening to podcasts like this one <laughs> yeah we um, we are we're our only listeners on the, this podcast <laughs> no but going and listening to other like mm-hmm. podcasts what even if it's not something that's like talking about productivity tips and stuff but um stuff like creative stuff or I don't know anything that's going to get your mind like thinking Uh, yeah another one is just like unplugging whether that's Um, like putting your phone in another room or like yeah I like I have to put my phone like face down on my desk when I'm working because anytime that that lights up I am so bad about it anytime that it lights up I have to pick it up 
and I have to look at whatever it was. Even though I have an Apple Watch, that's a little bit easier because like I can just look and like, oh, Ben texts me. That's not important. He sucks. And then I can go on with the rest of my day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have to, like you said about unplugging, I have to have my phone flipped over on the desk or away from me. Um, I can't have the TV on out in the living room. Um, I just have to be 100% focused on what I'm doing because I am so distractible. <laughs> like the littlest things, like even if I see a dog walking outside or something like that, I'll see that and be like, I need to go walk my dog now. And like, no, I don't need to do it right now. Like I need to get my stuff done. I'm so, I'm so bad about being distracted. It's unreal. <laughs> yeah. Distractions are chair. Yeah. Emails are really bad. Like when I get an email for either an inquiry or maybe another vendor emailed me or something, it's just like, it's one of those things that's like, takes me, like if I'm in a flow of editing creatively and then that email comes in, I'm part of me is like, I don't want to stop this flow. But then the other part of me is like, I need to get this email like responded to. Yeah. It's an everyday battle about like what you're working on now versus what you potentially could be working on or what you're potentially missing out on with either, you know, whether it's a couple looking to book you for their wedding or if it's another vendor reaching out to have you make a video for them or something or whatever. Um, yeah, that's, that's a constant battle. It's like, Oh man, I'm absolutely in the flow of this. Um, I don't want to stop working, but you're also like, I don't want to accidentally take too long and pass up on this, opportunity whatever it is even though mentally you don't know exactly what it is quite yet um but that's kind of a nice like transition into um i know we're saying the word flow a lot um but there's this thing called like i don't know is it called the state of flow or just being in the flow or whatever yeah there's um you get into this thing called flow there's also this another term that's called like hyper um um let's see flow versus hyper focus hyper focus yeah, um flow is better for your mind um um okay flow can be experienced by all people and most will many times in their lifetime Hyper focused is defined as a time of extreme focus on a particular task in which time falls away and the task at hand becomes the only point of attention. But that's typically experienced by people with ADHD. Um, yeah. Flow. Yeah, I've but, definitely been in flow. Yeah, I've definitely been in both too. Um, you know, with the, with the hyper focus thing, like, when you get so invested and so deep, like especially within an edit, you can absolutely just lose sense of reality and lose all senses of time. And you can like get into that, whatever that flow or that hyper focus, whatever you want to call it at 9 a.m. And then you look at the clock and it's 6 p.m. And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even eat. I haven't even went to the bathroom or anything like that today. Um, which I mean, I guess could... T- like potentially be dangerous if you, um, if that happens too often. Um, yeah. So flow, it says flow is defined as an optimal state of consciousness or optimal brain state where decision making becomes automatic. Intuition is heightened. Performance increases. Actions follow one another like a seamless pattern. Time falls away and breakthroughs in creative thought are made. Um, Wait, so that's that's flow. That's flow. Now hyper focused. Um, let's see. Um, often speak about hyper focus being helpful intermittently. What's likely happening is that they are actually intermittently slipping into the flow state. Um, I'm trying to see. So they're similar. I mean, I guess I don't one hundred percent understand the difference. Um, 
So it says hyperfocus is typically uncontrollable and leads to an extended focus to the point that it can harm productivity, such as spending four hours researching the history of the internet. <laughs> hyperfocus, although helpful in some situations, does not lead to expansive and creative thought that leads to creative physical and academic breakthroughs. Flow, on the other hand, leads to exponential changes in performance and problem solving. Okay, so yeah. Um <clears throat> That, that makes more sense. So I take back what I said. I don't know if I've ever really been in like the hyper focus type of thing. Maybe. Oh my gosh. I can get into that all so easily. And it's terrible because then once you're done being hyper focused, you're like, why did I just waste four hours of my time? Yeah. I mean, I guess like with, you know, like the YouTube rabbit hole or something like that. I mean, that's pretty easy to fall down. Oh, TikTok. People can, people can get hyper focused on TikTok. <laughs> Okay, so I take it back. I actually have been hyper focused. Like, I, yes, I've struggled with TikTok and YouTube and whatever. But anyway, besides that, um, I think something that's super cool and interesting to talk about is like that state of flow you were talking about, um, which I'm sure many people have experienced. I know you've experienced it. I know I've experienced it, especially with editing, where you are literally just so, you don't even like, you almost don't even have control over what you're doing. You just, like you said, you know the next steps. You know what clip you're going to put next. You know what audio you're going to use next. And before you know it, you've like, you're done and you created something awesome. Um, and, you know, sometimes that can take several hours and then you don't even realize what time it is. Like you just literally get into the state of mind where you're like, the only thing that's going on in my head right now is... Like, what's next? How am I going to make this better or whatever? Um, and, yeah, you just kind of lose sense of reality, um, at least from my experience with it. Yeah, definitely it's really easy to get into the flow state as a create. Not easy, but I feel like it's most common with people who are trying to be creative. Um, and I have a couple things that says – that kind of teaches you how you can – get into a flow state. Let's hear it. Uh, so the one thing is, is that it says that many experts say you should use certain kinds of music to help induce that flow state. And I know, I, I know what that is. Um, it's for me, I think it's different for each person. Um, let's see if this link, um, For me, it's like instrumental music um, because lyrics can like really pull me out of it if I'm like hearing certain lyrics. But if I hear instrumental music, so um, there's this song by um, – I can't even think of their name. They're like Odessa. Odessa is their name. Have you ever heard of them? I have not. Um. I'm sure you've played this, it for me in the car once or twice. Yeah, there's this song that's called um, – it starts out – the song starts out with this ticking sound. It's just this ticking sound. And the intro to the whole album actually is this person like is telling this story about how there was this Russian astronaut and um, this ticking sound was coming from the dashboard and it was driving them nuts – like insane like they're they're going like insane and so that person had to like eventually just make it into they like made it into like a song or like they just they they fell in love the what they said is they fell in love with the sound um and then that's how the intro goes into like the next song where it's like this ticking sound that just like turns into like this musical like masterpiece and it's it literally just feels like the song just flow like it's the point where like like you're just like flowing with it. Like you're just like, whoa, here it goes. Let's get it going. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those kind of songs that just like, I feel like I'm like just unconsciously like tapping my feet and like, mm -hmm. like I'm just like over here. Like I have like eight hands at once, like typing <laughs> and like editing. I'm just like, <laughs> feels yeah, like a I'm time lapse, but I'm like watching this time lapse. Like I'm in the current time lapse. It's yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Like when I worked at my other job, when I worked for someone else, um, 
like I would listen to music every day when I was doing stuff and, you know, I, it would really help me get in the zone, get in the flow or whatever. Now that's so hard because, you know, when you're editing a wedding, you can't really listen to the music other than the music that you're using for the video itself. Um, or do you, how do you, what <laughs> you're at, like, do you listen to music while you're at Like, Music other than well, you know, you unfortunately we can't listen to music while we're editing. But like, if I'm doing stuff like, if I'm responding to emails, or for me, I like will put a fireplace sound on. It's kind of crackling in the background. It kind of drowns out some of the other sounds of like someone driving by, honking their horn, or for you, kids playing recess outside. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes, quick no. I live right by like a daycare. And I swear these kids are out at recess every single second of the day, no matter the temperature. They're always just screaming and yelling, always. Literally, they're outside right now. <laughs> and it's I'm gonna Yeah. I guess it's nice So those right little now. those little like snippets what can pull your attention away from something mm-hmm. is what can take you out of that state. I wanted to read this really quick. Go um, ahead. And it's about music. It says music can actually help you become. So so for me, I do like this music stuff either if I'm like trying to respond to emails or I'm like trying to create something for my website. It kind of helps me just get like creatively going. But mm-hmm. it says music can actually help you become highly focused and therefore highly productive, especially when you listen to music on repeat or a re- or repetitive type music such as techno, classical music or trance. So that's like what I'm talking like you should literally go and um listen to this song Odessa uh um, yeah, I mean a moment we apart. can yeah we can I'm, drop the link yeah um, um but so it says it'll be easier to reach a state of flow listening to music with your earbuds in helps you block external distractions such as chatter from coworkers whatever some people probably can't use headphones personally I noticed that music keeps my mind in check and prevents it from wandering off. Um, but it says you can't, like, don't listen to new songs. Because, um, like, when a new song comes up, that's going to make your mind think, Focus, like, oh, whoa, yeah. what's this song? <laughs> Let me hear what we got here. But, like, if you put a song on repeat or, like, um, yeah, like, just songs that kind of have a nice rhythm to them. Yeah. Yeah, no that that makes that makes a lot of sense too. Like that even makes sense in the sense <laughs> that even makes sense in the sense. That even makes sense in the topic of like editing too. You know, the music that we pick has to have the right rhythm and flow for the story that we're t- trying to tell. And if you're editing with super good music, that you found and it, it's flowing so well. Those are the videos that you can knock out in under a week, you know? Um, yeah. If that so, is a perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes complete sense to me. And like, like I said, when I worked at my old job, I listen to music all the time. And, um, you know, when I'm, especially when I used to be a graphic designer and, uh, uh, marketing coordinator. Um, and when I did like the creative stuff like that, when I would listen to music, I could almost feel, you know, the music was telling as, as cheesy and cliche as that sounds. The music was like telling me how to design these different things. Like, I don't know, it's really weird, but I feel like most people probably understand. Um, and it's just really cool to think about how powerful music is, like for your brain. Um, it's awesome. Music. I love music so much. So, yeah. Um yeah, so that was the first one was music. Mm-hmm. Kind of went on a tangent. And that's there. something that yeah, and that's something to help you get into the flow, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, then the next one is the task needs to be somewhat challenging. Um, and I'm not really sure that me. I mean. <laughs> Like it can't, it can't be like a task of like, I'm taking it as like, so when I was a marketing, um, when I was working in marketing, um, you know, I would have these daily tasks of adjusting a graphic or, 
um, responding to like messages or whatever. And I would say the same thing every single time. Um, so it was almost like I wasn't using my head at all. It was just basically muscle memory. I think, I feel like if anything, that's what it's talking about. Make sure like you're doing something that's mentally engaging rather than just like something you don't have to think about. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it says flow also happens when a person's skills are fully involved in overcoming a challenge that is just about manageable. So it acts as a magnet for learning new skills and increasing challenges. If challenges are too low, one gets back to flow by increasing them. Um, yeah, so you, you just need to increase your challenges. Um, so yeah, yeah so, I can kind of get into that. If I start to, like, learn a new technique from a YouTube awesome. video or something, um, that's kind of when I can kind of get into it a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, it, yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, I'm going to just take it back to editing too, because each, each video you edit is different too. So in, in its own, it's, it's challenging in a different way. Um, you know, it's challenging to tell what you filmed 80 weddings. It's challenging to tell 80 plus different stories and not make it repetitive. So, um, yeah, let's, let's move on from this. I feel like it's just kind of. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, we're also getting close to the end here. Um, yeah, that's true. This, what was the end of – what was the next thing we were going to talk about? Uh, well, I mean, we've kind of talked about it a little bit. I was just going to talk about, like, you know, living in the head of a creative um, with, like, like, the challenges we face. Um, so, for example, the reason I wrote that down to talk about is, like, so, okay, Ben, I know you do this a lot. You're sitting and you're editing a video. And you see this little piece of that video and you're like, oh, I can make an Instagram reel or I can make a TikTok out of that. And then you're like, oh, let me go do that. And then like you go and you make this Instagram reel or this TikTok or both or whatever. And then you go post that. And that, I, that's like a perfect example of how like the creative brain works. You just have so many different ideas running through your head at all times. And sometimes it makes it hard not saying that making like those reels and, and TikToks aren't productive, like that that does help your business and that, you know, that builds engagement and everything like that. But sometimes like just living in that kind of headspace where your mind is running all the time um, can almost serve as like a distraction. Uh, and that's something that I challenge, I, I'm challenged with daily is how fast my mind runs, how many different ideas I have where it can easily pull me out of what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if you're you're similar that way or what, but no, absolutely. And it I it's it's to the point where like if I have an idea, I feel like I can't think about anything else until I just complete that idea. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that idea takes up like a huge chunk of my brain and I'm just like I feel like it also, though, like, once I complete that idea, I feel like it's allowed me to, like, expand my creativity. Yeah. Like, I, when I'm doing that new idea, maybe I learn a new technique and I find new creative ways to do things. Um, but, yeah, it, is, it can be very yeah, distracting, <clears throat> always coming up with these new ideas and – just a- aching to do them. Yeah. I don't know. Is there any, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on? I, I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like this podcast was a little bit all over the place, but maybe, maybe it'll help someone. I don't know. <clears throat> um, I think being productive is going to be different for each person. I think ultimately, I mean, it's so hard to just, it's so hard to just, it's a lot harder than it, than some people make it out to be. Like some people might look like they're productive, but ultimately I feel like everyone, everyone runs into the problem of being unproductive certain days or they don't feel productive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you just have to, you just have to 
get up and do it. Yeah, like in the, in the last video uh, I was talking about, like, you just got to do it. You just got to start and then it'll kind of flow and, you know, help you get to the point like where you need to be. But you know what else you can just do? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. <laughs> Gosh. So we're throwing the ad at the very end of the video? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Is that okay? Can we do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We can cut it. We can record the ad later, too. Um, I just thought it was a perfect flow. I think – anyway, I think we have a sponsor for this podcast on episode two or three or four or whatever you want to call it, but <laughs> – Yeah. Um, here, I could go over, like, kind of just go over a few tips to be more productive. Like, really quickly, just straightforward tips. Yeah, let's hear them. Okay, so first thing we talked about was writing it down. Mm-hmm. And try not to get too uh, – don't, like – don't write, like, 30 things down. Like, maybe just go easy and be like, today I'm going to do um, – let's think of somebody that's not creative. Like what's who's someone else that's not in the like filmmaking photographer? Let's be like, all right, I'm gonna call these photos today. I don't know how long that takes. Your accountants. <laughs> See, I okay. We have to refer to ourselves because I literally don't know what everybody else does. Yeah, so, exactly. So like just... today, I'm gonna do a ceremony edit. <laughs> I'm gonna do the toast edit. I'm gonna do, um. And I'm going to get the timeline started. Yeah. So that's the editing pieces I'm going to get done today. And then uh, make sure my emails and everything are up to date. Like I'm ch- I've am i checked, responded to people. That's like my to-do list. And that's even starting to get big for me. Like, um, Yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things, something that's super productive or super helpful that I've learned, like especially from college and being involved with different organizations and stuff, is pick – So look at it from like a week standpoint, pick three big things that you need to get done that week. And that that's like ultimately your list. But then each day make a separate list to that of like what steps you need to take to accomplish that goal, those goals. So for example, for me, say here, I'll, I'll even bring it to like my old job as a marketing coordinator, graphic designer. Um, so, okay. So this week I need to, I need to meet with the production team when we're about to shoot this, uh, TV spot for, um, for this commercial. Um, so I'm going to put that down and that's one of the big things. Meet with production team, blah, 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 blah. Two, I need to get this, um, I need to get this parts catalog designed. That's my second biggest thing that I need to do. And then three, um, I need to launch like this Instagram campaign or Facebook campaign or social media, whatever. So then I would have those three lists or three things that I need to do that week. And then under them would be the little tasks that I need to do to complete each thing. So whether that's, okay, email this person or design this part or get a new photo of this or whatever. Um, I don't know. That's something that I learned in college that I did at my old job a little bit that was helpful. Um, instead of like putting big tasks each day that I get have to get done, looking at from a little bit wider of a perspective of what do you need to get done that week and what is like what's most important, what's going to make the most impact for your job or whatever you're doing at that time. <clears throat> Any other tips? Um, yeah. So then another one is silencing distractions we talked about. So that's like putting your phone down. Yeah. Look, um, flip that phone over. Don't hit do not disturb on your computer. Like in, I know on my computer, I can go up and hit do not disturb so I don't get any notifications. Um, and like those distractions can also come from like sound. So whether that's putting noise canceling headphones on, um, stuff like that. So yeah, limiting distractions. The other one is to take breaks. So like, Maybe you're sitting for a long period of time, stand up and go walk around, go eat something, go eat some pie. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, to emphasize that, literally you got to make sure you're taking breaks too. You can't – like it's not healthy just to constantly work. 
for each hour of the day. Like make sure you're taking time for yourself. Make sure you're, you know, you're doing things that you enjoy doing. I know a lot of people probably enjoy their job and enjoy what they do for work. Like, you know, we do and that that's good, but make sure like, I also, I love music. I like to play guitar. Um, you know, I like to spend time with my dogs or whatever. Like make sure you're doing that too. And make sure you're doing that on your breaks. Um, it will just kind of, I don't know. I, I don't know. It just helps in a very broad sense of things uh, to take, to take breaks and to do, do things that you love outside of, you know, your job, whether you love that or not. Yeah. Uh, next one is nourish your mind. So whether that's like listening to a podcast or reading, um, and I mean, working out could even be that too. Yeah. Then the other one is nourishing your body. Um, so whether that's like eating something healthy, um, being healthy, going to work out. Um, the other thing is make time for what's important. So like you you might feel more productive if you felt like you've gotten a good amount of time with your like family and stuff. Um, get some rest. <laughs> I suck at that. <laughs> um, be thankful. And then it, the last thing that it says is life is short. Success is least and feels that rent is – Success is least and feels that rent is due every day. Staying present in the key to being staying present is the key to being productive. Yeah. Those are some <laughs> those are some good tips. Yeah, so like every day is not gonna be as productive as the last, but like just try not to worry too much about it. Yeah, a little like we talked about earlier, like, you know, if if you're struggling or whatever with your job or, you know, even like day to day life, like, you know, I struggle with anxiety and stuff. And some days it's just it's hard to just get out of bed sometimes. Um, so even like if if you have those kind of struggles like I have in the past and um and you get up and you make yourself breakfast or whatever, like count that as being productive. Like don't the people that say like, I need something huge to be done to be productive. That's, that's not always true. Like it, 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 it's with each person individually and how they look at being productive. Um, so yeah, just be productive, but also don't be hard on yourself if you don't accomplish these huge monumental things on your to-do list. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we can wrap it up here. Um, we're like, yeah. What's what's something that inspired you <laughs> recently? Oh shoot! <laughs> that, I gotta think of something. Yeah, if you're new here, which you might be, you might not be. It's only our second episode. Um, we're just kind of doing something that at the end of each episode, whether, you know, the flow of the episode or it was good or it wasn't good or whatever, um, just, just by ending it, by talking about something that either inspired us recently, something that we've learned recently, um, or even something that we're grateful for. Something that, do you have something? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give a huge shout out to, to Ben here. Um, very grateful. I was struggling very much with an edit, um, recently and I'm trying to meet the death. I tried to meet the deadline of today, which I did thankfully, but, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if it was with being sick and with everything else that was going on. Um, I was so stuck creatively and I was just not happy, uh, with, with the route that the, the film was going. Uh, I probably started it over like six different times and I could never, <laughs> never get it right. Um, ben was actually here the last two days. We were working on a gym video for Creative Crunch, some of our corporate work. Um, and he so gratefully uh, kind of helped me reshift the edit of um, of the film. And he took over and he basically deleted a portion of what I had and um, – restarted the flow of it and then gave it to me. And then that helped me, 
um, finish the film with something that I'm very happy with. Um, so seriously, huge shout out to Ben. Very grateful for, mm. for that and helping me meet that deadline because I was so creatively stuck. I don't think I've ever been so creatively stuck. So yeah, shout out to Ben and don't be afraid to, um, ask your friends for oh, yeah. assistance or, or help ever, because seriously, the, the group of people you surround yourself with is what's going to help you, um, become successful or even productive, which I say getting that film done by today was productive. Um, I don't know. I think. Geez, maybe you're welcome. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I honestly think, I think personally, just knowing that you have one video left is kind of inspiring. Like, shoot, I need to like, I want to get there. Like, I want to get to that point. We'll and seeing all these other videographers just, like, dropping these videos um, mm -hmm. is pretty inspiring. Um, oh, I've got another thing, too. So, yeah, I mean, wh why? what's your other one? Um, I was going to say it's super inspiring. Um, dot the I event planning dot the I events. I don't know exactly what her complete business name is. Um, but her name's Kayla. Uh, she started this event planning business called dot the I and, uh, she had her first styled shoot on Sunday and that's, uh, I, I was filming there. Uh, and that was just super inspiring to me. Um, I love when people have their passions or their goals or whatever, and they go after them and they start, um, and she did that and the style shoot went super well, super awesome. Um, and yeah, it, it just inspired me to like keep going after what, what I want. So, um, shout out to Kayla of dot the I, I know we've talked to her, um, a little bit about maybe bringing her on to the podcast, to to talk a little bit. And I know we've had some other people interested in hanging out with us and whatever, but yeah, shout out dot the I events. Go go check her out on Instagram and Facebook and yeah. Nice. Yeah, another one I just thought about right now. That was I think a little better than the last one. Um we just got a bunch of like rugs and we just got like a ton of stuff finally brought into our uh house and now it feels more like a house like it's it's cozier. It just feels a lot more comfortable now that we have these stuff that makes it feel more homey. Um, and I, just knowing that, like, just feels a lot more productive. Like, we got all these things in here that we've been wanting for a long time. And now I don't have to worry about that stuff now that it's in here. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty, I guess, I don't know, inspiring and just motivating that now that that's done, I can... No, it's not. I don't have to worry about it. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I, I guess we'll end it with those rugs then. Yeah. Hopefully, if anyone listens to it or makes it this far, hopefully something was helpful out of it. Um, just kind of off the top idea to talk about productivity. But um, we'll probably have a couple more, and then hopefully we'll get a guest on, um, and that will be super interesting and fun. So, um, also, if you guys have like any topics or anything that you want us to talk about, um, that's actually super helpful to us. Um, so yeah, drop a comment or message us or email us at whatever info at creativecrunch.com. Is that it? I think or that info? was it. Creative Crunch, and Creative Crunch info at gmail.com. Gmail. That's right. We don't have the creative franchise.com thing yet. But anyway, yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah. We'll see yeah. you in the next one. And peace. Today's tomorrow is yesterday's Today's tomorrow. Today's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go find that. This is the Creative Crunch Podcast. Yesterday's left turn might be tomorrow's right turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 that's a good idea.